thank you atik uh, thanks shubhangi and i think thank you for setting up the context i think uh just a second uh, can i have yeah thank you so as atik mentioned uh, the intention of my presentation would be to sort of share with you uh one how is energy efficiency uh, a cost saving enabler and also an enabler to reduce environmental impacts but more importantly how is energy efficiency a tool to drive uh, competitiveness in your organization that will be the intention of my presentation uh before that just to set out the background uh, quickly i think energy efficiency can be defined as the optimal utilization of energy without any trade offs in uh, either the smoother operations or the safety uh, during the operation itself so it is paramount that while we adopt any energy efficiency it cannot come at, at the cost of you know operator discomfort or or safety being at a risk um, but having said that energy efficiency as was mentioned earlier is as a concept a one it is cross sectoral second it clearly has demonstrated huge benefits when it comes to economically that is by employing uh, or adopting energy efficiency initiatives there are definitely cost savings that that will accrue but more importantly what the, the important thing that i want to drive out here is that there are 40 million close to 40 million msme units in our country and if you look at it from a broader perspective and if we say that if each of those units will work uh, uh, towards uh, you know reducing their energy consumption by say two units then we are talking about 80 million units of uh, energy consumption being avoided uh, or, or 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 and subsequently this 80 million units of reduction in energy consumption translates to significant amount of uh, coal burning reduction inside the thermal power stations which will have a great impact when it comes to the emissions uh, we can avoid a whole lot of emissions from our power plants so i think energy efficiency therefore one it is the incremental step it is the initial step that any msme can undertake it not only gives benefits economically to that msme unit it it also has a larger environmental impact it, uh, you know on on a national level and and having said that energy efficiency is not a new concept energy efficiency is something which is quite mature be it both a large industry or msmes energy efficiency is pretty well understood but the only thing that might differentiate is the fact that maybe in large industries or some other uh, units who have explored energy efficiency but they've gone uh, you know in, into the extensive uh, analysis or extensive adoption of energy efficiency inside their own premises whereas in some small scale or 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 micro scale units energy efficiency is done selectively it is not done as a part of the system um but despite of all this one thing that i would like to highlight is the fact that energy efficiency is not a one time activity it cannot be a one time activity it is always a continual activity uh, what i mean by that is for any operation which is energy efficient at this point in time uh by default when the operations you know when uh, with the, the time passing by the operations with through wear and tear and what not will definitely the, the efficiency of the systems will, will start to come down and therefore it becomes paramount that uh, the systems the organizations ensure that the energy performance level that they had at the start remain the same or even improve from what they had at the start right therefore energy efficiency cannot just be a one time activity where we just answer to a certain compliances or maybe to a third party which is asking for it but rather imbibe it as a part of our system and make it a continual process now uh, having understood the benefits of energy efficiency i mean and i think that is pretty much demonstrated and it is clear the next question is therefore that for msmes out there who are listening to us right now or the stakeholders who are who are interacting with the msmes the question would be what should be the approach uh, towards energy efficiency how can we adopt energy efficiency so we basically uh, bring it down to three pronged approach uh, the first one of that is capacity utilization what do we mean by that basically when we design a system it should be designed in such a way that whatever we generate is equivalent to whatever we want to consume at the process end a good example of that if i have to take would be say a compressor which i think would be fairly understood uh, across all the sectors just take an example of a compressor an air compressor uh, which is designed for 300 cubic foot per minute of air flow that is cfm and the process where which it is connected to requires only 200 cfm of air now what happens in this case is there is significantly a, a mismatch between a generation end and the consumer end and the compressor is clearly oversized 
we might you know the operations will not stop compressor will keep on generating the air process will get its due air and the operation will not stop but what happens to the energy consumption basically because of this oversizing the compressor will run for 30% 40% of its time uh, on unload condition what do we mean by unload condition the compressor will be consuming electricity but will not be delivering any output uh, it will not be delivering any air so from the energy point of view the msme has not saved anything they have put up a compressor which is of higher capacity their operations are working well everything is fine but on the you know on their energy on, uh, conservation front they are not able to save anything because they are still the money is still draining out or the energy is still being drained out or during the unload power so it is very important that capacity utilization is the first step uh, if we go back to our offices or, or our own factories we need to see how much is the mismatch between what we have put in and what we are operating in an easier example of that could be i think which all of you will corroborate or understand well is uh, let's take a case of say an office space where there are four cubicles and we enter in the office space there are four people working in those cubicles but they have 30 light fixtures above them the question therefore is do we really need 30 light fixtures for four people uh, is the lumens that we are giving out isn't is it really for that do we really need 30 light fixtures or can we have just 10 So I think this is what we mean by capacity utilization. So if there is an opportunity to optimize, or, you know, optimize our capacity and and make them run at their optimal capacity, that will be the first step. The second step is, in case uh, you know uh, we are not able to do that, we come down to fine tuning. What do we mean by fine tuning? Fine tuning is basically doing certain incremental changes to your own systems or your own equipments. Um, referring again to the compressor example, now there is a scenario where my process needs uh, say 100 cfm of air at 5 kg pressure but at my generation end that is my compressor it is delivering 100 uh, cfm of air but at 7 kg pressure because you have kept the setting like that now what is happening is first we need to see why there is this big difference in the pressure is there a natural pressure drop from the generation to the user is actually the pressure coming down because of the pipeline bends or the friction in the pipes therefore uh, there is this drop in the pressure if that is the case we need to fix it streamline it and reduce our generation pressure if not and in most cases what we have seen is that the generation pressure is kept at 7 kg because that is how it came uh, from the oem whereas we also realize that at the process end our equipments cannot run at 7 kg they need 5 kg pressure for them to operate so what we do is we install prvs that is pressure regulating valves now by doing that what we are doing again is we are definitely saving our equipment at the consumer end we are saving our process equipments um, we are also ensuring that operations are smoother but what is happening to the energy are we saving energy in this no is there an opportunity to save energy absolutely yes how the 7 kg pressure instead of artificially reducing it with pressure regulating valves and bringing it down to 5 kg why can't we go to the generation side itself reduce the generation pressure just by changing the tap setting from 7 to 5 or closer to 5 keeping certain margins by doing that what we will essentially do is we will save a huge lot of energy uh, because of the generation end now the compressor will only be running to generate uh, a lower pressure air therefore there will be a huge substantial saving right so that is our second step so though i hope these two things are clear so if as an msme enterprise uh, you want to go back to your factory these are the two approaches initially that you need to take one analyze your own assets see what is their actual design capacity versus uh, what they are actually running for and if there is a substantial mismatch can we optimally load them if not can we fine tune our systems can we further you know try to do certain incremental changes maybe put up a vfd and optimize uh, optimize the compressed air system or any other system for that matter that then if both of these are not happening and uh, you know in some cases what might happen is uh, the technology has served its lifetime Uh, technology is already 20 25 years old so we can't expect the very high levels of energy efficiency from the technology so therefore time has come for us to replace the technology and put up the energy efficiency technology the important point here to note is while we have that again let's take an example of a compressor we have an old uh, you know reciprocating compressor in place which is already 25 years plus now that compressor is giving us the air which is needed by the process so from the production point of view we are seeing that there is no stoppage everything is running fine but the huge loss that we have is by continuously running that compressor you know beyond its lifetime 
at a very low energy efficient energy efficient levels we are actually draining out our own money uh, there are far better efficient technologies available in the market uh, they might cost us slightly higher upfront they might cost us they might be a cap, there might be a capital outlay that you'll have to shell out but the operation and the maintenance cost if you account for the next 20 years the savings that you'll accrue will far outweigh as was mentioned earlier so i think these are decisions to be taken at the at the management level at the senior management level at the operation level out of the three approaches of course technology upgradation is the last approach but the first thing is we need to first see whatever assets we have in place whether they are their capacity is properly utilized number 2 if not can we fine tune them uh, by you know putting up certain other uh, you know changing changing certain settings putting up uh, new uh, uh, other technologies like vfds or etc etc if not if all of this is out of the window then can we go for technology upgradation overall uh, so these are the three pronged approach i hope uh, it is much clearer for all of you and all of you once you go back to your factories or your premises you can try to undertake with this lens so uh so basically uh now uh, approach is clear to us i hope the next step is we have also segregated and bucketed them in various different uh, categories for example when it comes to an msme a typical msme cross sectorally these are the five buckets that we talk about electrical thermal compressed air pumping and process applications so what are the energy efficient opportunities for improvement in all of these buckets um important point to note here is that of course i am going to list out the opportunities for improvement under each of these buckets i have in the paucity of time i'll not be in a position to explain each one of them because they are in itself a, a topic to discuss but the intention here is that while you have the access to our slides and the presentation you'll also get the access to all these important opportunities for improvement for you to then see and explore whether you have already accessed and explored all of these uh technologies at your own facilities or whether there is some more potential which you can see from the list that you can undertake starting with electrical of course start you know you can look at transformer loading we should see whether the transformers are optimally loaded there should not be either overloaded or underloaded power factor we see a, is, is a big big uh, opportunity because right now many msmes are paying huge penalties uh, uh to the uh, you know because of maintaining a uh, low power factors a uh, voltage optimization is the other our motors that we have in line a uh, motors we have you know what happens is motors fail we rewind them we again put them in but there is a limit to which we can rewind and put it again because for after every rewinding that we do these rewounded motors are not efficient they cannot be of the same efficiency levels so i think we should have an sop in place where if we are driving energy efficiency that we cannot use uh, a rewounded motors after say one time or two times and if and also on the other hand we should also see uh, what standard of motors are we using right now there might be i1 i2 motors in place that is what we also see but there are already i4 and i5 standard motors which are available available in the market which are far more efficient so i mean these are some of the aspects in electrical that you can look at and similarly in pumps for example if you remember the approach that i mentioned first of all optimum design if you have to install a new pump we need to know what is the actual process requirement and accordingly try to you know design the pump and the pumping layout in such a way that it it matches the actual requirement and more importantly this is another thing that we see that sometimes the pumps that we sort of uh, procure they are uh, you know their design efficiencies are itself very very low and they are in the tune of 50% 60% so you cannot expect a much larger efficiency out of it so while procuring itself we also need to be very mindful of the fact that the pumps that we are getting in have to be have to be of higher efficiencies and then if you remember the uh, the other aspect of fine tuning which is installing vfd or uh, doing hydrophobic coating uh, you know to improve incremental uh, incrementally improve the energy performance uh, likewise in compressed air arresting leakages i think very important point which we see in the compressed air network in msmes uh, of course the, the the piping network is not significant it is not as high as say, any large industry but having said that the leakages are in the tune of 20% 25% so basically what you're doing is compressor is you know generating compressed air and 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 25% of it is going to leakages alone so i think it is very important to remember that you know however the air is free but compressed air is not free you are putting in money to generate that compressed air so it is also very important that our workers and our operators are enabled 
are unable to understand what are the leakages in the system. You know, there should be a guidelines to them that you know it, it, a simple leak detection through sound, if they can do it and they can put a tag on the pipeline so that whenever there is an opportunity to fix it, they can always do it. So maybe or or set up two volunteers only looking at compressor leakage if that is a big problem in, in terms of identifying wherever the leakages are happening. And if the leakages are very persistent, then that means that there is, you know, we might have to change the pipeline itself. The pipeline has, of course, uh, it is time for us to change it. So I think this is, with respect to leakages, something where it does not require huge investment. It only requires a concerted effort to, to optimally run our compressors. Uh, second bit is, as I mentioned, op, you know, uh, optimizing a generation pressure, putting a VFD uh, to, to, to match, to, to sort of uh, have the, cons the consumption and the generation match make. And then waste heat recovery from compressors, the heat that is being drained out right now, can we utilize it uh, in the system? And there are technology suppliers out there who are giving solutions for it. So there are these are some of the opportunities that you can explore when it comes to electrical pumps and compressors. And similarly, when it comes to boiler actually, and stream distribution loop. Actually, sorry to uh, interrupt, but uh, um, can you please uh, try to uh, conclude in two to three minutes, please? Thank you. So uh, clearly, so coming to uh, the boilers and steam distribution, so we are talking about say radiation losses and the boiler efficiencies, uh, waste heat recoveries, multi-stage boilers. So again, not going into all of this, of course, as I said, it, it would require an intensive discussion, but it is out there. You can always look at this list and, and try to see what, what all, you, all of you can sort of try to explore. Uh, beyond this, I wanted to spend uh, uh, just a minute on this particularly is, is the fact that Energy efficiency beyond these opportunities for improvement also have uh, other, what are the other drivers? Number one, leveraging digitalization for energy efficiency. That is, you, you know, adopting IoT based solutions, especially to start with for monitoring and metering systems. Right now, the MSMEs uh, don't have any meters in place. They do not know what their equipments are generating, what they are uh, con uh, consuming rather, and there is no asset performance monitoring which is being done. So this is one area where one, you can have first, uh, each uh, in-depth analysis of your energy consumption, but more importantly, uh, uh, introduce IoT layer into your uh, uh, into your factories. Second is fostering innovation. I discussed about it uh, in both in terms of process and technology. Third is you know you know trying you know in case where you have certain financial constraints, can we look at innovative implementation model which will make the implementation far easier? I'll cover one of them if the time permits. I'll just try to do that. And the last bit which I wanted to focus on more was. That if you have, if you are an energy efficiency unit and you want to become a world-class energy efficiency unit, it cannot happen simply by doing, uh, you know, intermittent audits or compliances. Then there is a need to build a, a system in place, a robust system for energy efficiency. Make energy efficiency a core strategic element and therefore drive decisions based on it. One way of doing it is through ISO 50001, which is a voluntary standard which guides. The, uh, the MSMEs on improving their energy performance. Uh, basically, by doing this process, some of the key aspects, uh, of course, of this energy ISO 50001 are that it enables top management commitment. You have policy directives coming in through this, uh, policy directives uh, concerning, say, procurement decisions. For any HT that I will buy, it will be five-star labeled or, or no less, right? For any ceiling fan that I will buy, will be BLDC ceiling fan. So it, it will be a policy directive, right? With, with the top leadership involved. Second, it will help you set the baseline. It will help you measure and monitor most of your equipment, set you the baseline, develop an energy action plan. It will also help you develop key indicators that you'll have to measure and monitor. And of course, in, in the whole process, the important thing is the awareness level, the awareness to the entire, uh, uh, you know, all the employees, right from top leadership to, to the workers. All of them will be aware of the concept of energy efficiency and the need for energy efficiency overall. So at the end, I think uh, it was very important that I discuss, this is my last slide, I'll just discuss this model with all of you because I think uh, uh, just to share uh, an insight, last year we did a quick survey with our industry members just to understand that what was their post COVID scenario, how they were looking at recovering from it uh, and what was the implication on energy efficiency. What they said, uh, it, it was very interesting to note that um, you know, energy efficiency still remains a top priority because it clearly is uh, makes them more competitive. Uh, has uh, you know gives them that enables them to uh, save their uh, energy costs. But more importantly, what they said is financial crunch is of course a prevalent issue at this time. 
and therefore more than 70% of them said they'll be more than willing to explore esco model now what is esco model esco stands for energy service companies now in a traditional arrangement if, if any msme wants a technology they will go to the technology supplier and buy the technology and pay for it but in the esco uh, system what will happen is there is an esco which will put up the technology at the client facility and they will put up the technology at their own cost so both the technical risk as well as financial risk is been taken care by the esco themselves uh, all the operation and maintenance during the part of the contract will be taken care by esco so what they only do is they have the espc signed or epc which is energy performance contract with the client as per the energy performance contract the esco says that the technology that i will put in your facility will result in 5% or 10% or whatever uh, savings uh, each month and uh, the only thing that they have to do is that after each month whatever they save they'll have to pay, pay a certain share of that savings back to the esco and this is how esco generates their own money and recovers its own cost and after maybe period of 2 or 3 years till they have recovered their money then they go back the asset remains with the client and uh, the client uh, uh, avails the benefit see the value add here is if there is a client who is either skeptical of the technology or if there is a client who is who is having financial crunch escos are a good tool a tool because uh, escos are a medium where they can come in and bring in their technology take the technology risk demonstrate the savings to you so you as a client will not have to pay anything up front the only payment that you do is out of your savings that is also a percentage of that you'll have to share to the esco so of course esco has its own challenges but this is one uh, uh, model which we feel going forward in promoting energy efficiency has to play a larger role uh with this i will conclude my presentation uh of course if there are any questions i'm sure once we share the slides the list of technologies that you see if you have any questions on it we will be there to answer you and help you out with it also if you want to explore esco models or any other models and want more information you have my contact details thank you once again thanks a lot thank you akshay uh, i guess we have a uh, few poll questions uh, based on akshay's presentation so i will uh, request wri team to take it forward here. yeah um hi this is tejaswini here from wri um i'll be launching the first um, poll question um and you'll have about 30 seconds to answer that Akshay, do you want to briefly just discuss this? Yeah, yeah, um, yes, the answer. Yes. I mean, sure. Yes, I think it is quite evident that uh, the the uh, the participants are very well aware of the fa the factor of life cycle cost, which is basically it accounts for both your initial cost as well as operation and maintenance cost. I think for any procurement decision henceforth, uh, uh, this is one aspect, especially when it comes to energy efficiency, that has to be considered, and and it is very well uh, corroborated by the the poll survey as well. Thank you. Move on to the next. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'll be launching the next one. Again, you'll have around thirty seconds to answer this question as well. i think uh, very encouraging to note that um, at least everybody has uh, uh, sort of uh, you know they have these unexplored areas especially compressors uh, electrical and in fact i think our panel today uh, we have a panelist on compressors as well so it will be interesting to also listen from them
Well, okay, it's quite evident. I think this also uh, sort of uh, corroborates what I was talking about in the last slide. Uh, of course, uh, there are some cases where up, uh, upfront capital outlay is preferred, but ESCO performance contracting, again, more than 70% of them. So I think uh, this, this sort of indicates that ESCO can be uh, uh, the next step to look at, at at all of these facilities. And therefore, if you need any of uh, the information more on ESCO performance contracting and, of course, about the ESCOs, you guys can reach out to us uh, and we'll be there to help you out. Thank you.